we spend a fair amount of time with our clients thinking about collaboration and how they work together and we design buildings around that or workspaces around that and we have a very special physical environment both in new york matt when i look at your image and i see the office in the background and it just like says you know new york loft office it's so clean and special and then here in los angeles <clears throat> we work in one of the i think one of the better buildings in all of the city in terms of its scale and its domesticity etc but to some degree it reflects the past in a number of different ways. And I wonder, and I've talked about this before with some of you individually, do you imagine a way that we would change our physical environment that might reflect the collaborative, some of the principles that we talk about um, in our work, changing the physical manifestation of the environment, God forbid the you know, what's, what's going on today and how that might impact the practice? Well, as you said, Joe, you know, I think we're having this conversation during the time of a global pandemic and obviously we're all in our respective um, environments. Um, most of us are working at home right now. And I think that that has been something that we have talked about uh, a lot in the last couple of years, even before the pandemic hit. Um, mm. You know, I, I think that one of the things that we struggle with, at least in Los Angeles, is that as Los Angeles becomes um, ever more sprawling, ever more dense, ever more traffic heavy city, um, it becomes a very segregated place uh, of sort of isolated neighborhoods. And um, we have this beautiful building that we work in but it is it is it is sometimes limiting physically because we are wrestling with its history and you know we need to respect that history but sometimes that history fights with you know contemporary architectural practice um we are wrestling with certain realities about um who can um who can actually who can and who wants to come and work uh in that building on the west side of Los Angeles and in an area that's fairly affluent um, that sort of changes the socioeconomic dynamic of our employee population. Um, and also, you know, I mean, in terms of just the way people are increasingly prioritizing their personal lives and trying to strike that balance between working and living, um, you know, remote work is, is I think, something that we had to, we were all forced recently to jump into. And some of us were more reluctant uh, or eager than others. I think it's been very interesting to see how ultimately, I think it's been fairly successful. I think we all miss each other and we miss that ability to kind of just get a crew together and, and have that quick design charrette on the wall. But at the same time, um, in certain ways, it has been um, quite liberating and uh, I think it's here to stay. It would be hard to put that genie back in the bottle uh, in, a, in a complete capacity. So what does that mean for what our office, less about the physical environment, but like what does it be, what, what does its physic, what does its physicality actually serve for us? Is it the place where we all come together periodically? Um, is it the place where we start to expand and, and, and welcome a community for events in the future um, so that we can then kind of go back to our home environments and work uh, in, a, in a more focused way. That, that to me is going to be a really interesting shift. Um, the, the change from always being together, always collaborating in a physical, in-person way. Uh, and how do we now integrate the virtual component of that? Marisa hit on all pretty amazing points. Um, Thankfully, our industry was pretty well set up to be able to ship to an at-work environment. We had already been moving uh, a, a majority of our digital design tools are cloud-based based on just subscriptions. So um, thankfully, that was an easy transition for the staff to be able to 
you know, work in a, in a different location, but still be able to collaborate with the team. I, I think the bigger question is really what is going to happen with the technology, what technologies are going to develop um, for the collaboration. As we've talked about to um, a lot of people about what's amazing about our space is it has the stu open studio environment. So you have that ability to just listen to anybody's conversation, you know, learn through basically osmosis, you know, have the ability to, you know, quickly walk over, uh, chat with David, you know, as Joe, you've always mentioned just the corridor between um, your space and Fred's space, you know, the major decisions of this practice happened, you know, in those kind of public ancillary spaces. So um, it's really going to be figuring out, you know, as, as even Fred says, you know, the third space. So how do we develop or create that those types of spaces um, they're already here in this building but how do we expand that now into this at home um, environments um, marisa you you bring up a really interesting idea about um, the physical plant maybe it's not used for just working that it's used as this kind of community gathering space that you're bringing in more than just architects into the space more than just artists that um, you know, there could be alternate uses for the space, um, but you still respect, you know, its history. It uh, was set up with amazing gardens, um, this connection to the outside. Um, so you already have kind of a, those, those kind of safer spaces in that way. So, um, but with uh, the state of the world, I think, you know, the bubble has been broken um, for a lot of companies, a lot of industries that working somewhere else working remotely um, not being at a physical location where everybody's at is okay you know we can make this work it's working successfully um which you know i, I think has a great impact to the health and welfare of ourselves our staff um, and everybody else in the, in the community so it's really going to be about how do we look at alternate uses um, as we kind of think about the future I was just going to add, I think the, interestingly, the LA office is fairly well suited to the kind of some of the qualities you need. I mean, uh, there's different ways to look at it, but the, all the gardens getting cross ventilation, it's really helpful. Um, we're kind of in separate zones. So there's a lot of space in the office where you can go for individual uh, kind of meetings. So in, in New York, we have two, two full walls of window that we get great, great cross ventilation here when it's, uh, when the weather's good, like it is right now. So, um, but I think, yeah, I think the need for physical space is definitely still there and it's, I don't think it's going to shrink at all. I think we'll always want at, at least as much space to come together with it. We just can't pack it as much as we did previously. So right now I'm at home, but, uh, um, maybe 70% of the time I, I go off if I uh, I get more focused and I personally and uh, I enjoy working there. Uh, all the books there I can reference the library books and uh, large strong computer and monitor. But uh, having the flexibility like uh, joining the meeting from home like this is also a great thing. Uh, and then. Um, the design process uh, with the team in the current project is working uh, much better than I imagined with the people working remotely. That, that's been my experience. 